Folks at home, welcome back to the backyard pond where we have our pet bass, Bonnie, Clyde, and the rest of the gang. It's been getting hot here in Bama, so we had to use the solar-powered umbrella again to give them a little bit of shade during the hottest part of the day. So if you've been following the channel, you all know that this week was supposed to be the turtle pond build week, and we were going to bring the Aquascape crew in and build a big turtle pond, but unfortunately we had a tropical storm come through, and all the rain delayed the shipment of the big aqua blue stones, so we're having to reschedule Aquascape to come in, but... Today, I'm going to be building a turtle pond myself, and I've gotten a lot of messages from you guys over the years about how big of a tank should I put a bass in or a turtle in, and I've always given that advice that as your pets grow, the enclosure needs to grow as well. As you've seen with our pet bass in the past, we started them out in a 55-gallon tank, we moved them to a 300-gallon tank, and then we built them a pond. And almost a year ago, we hatched five baby ninja turtles, and we put them in a 20-gallon tank, but now they've outgrown that tank, and as a responsible pet owner, I feel the urge to get them out of that tank right away. So this pond is gonna be a DIY project. All the parts can be bought from a Lowe's or Home Depot, and it's gonna be very cheap and inexpensive, but I know that there's a lot of you out there that can't afford a big aquascape style pond, so this may be a small, cheap water feature you're interested in. I'm expecting the total parts to be around 300 bucks, and it should just take me a day to build it. Let's get it started. All right, so let's talk about the location of this pond. So the big pond that Aquascape is going to build is going to be real big, even bigger than our other pond, and come all the way out here. But we're going to have to build them a temporary turtle pond, and I'm thinking about doing it over here in this area because we're going to have to wall them off because we got the fence, the house. So if we build a pond right here, we'll just have to section off something some edging or something around here to keep them in the pond. So I'm going to go ahead and remove Liz's lemon tree and we're going to get started digging. So let's take a look at all the parts we got for the temporary pond. This is 125 gallon liner. We also got a filter kit. This is going to also act as a fountain, a couple different nozzles, topsoil, garden soil for the flowers, some sand that's going to go in up under the liner. And I considered going in with these paper style stones, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't think all that stone right around the turtle pond would be good for them. I think they'll like the sand and dirt more, especially for laying eggs and that sort of thing. We also got some plants. Some of these are going to go in around the big pond. I just like sticking to that natural green look until you get down here to the sunflowers. The big sunflowers are definitely going to go around the bigger pond. I think we've settled on this as our final pond location. The heat of the day, the sun's out here, and that tree will give them a little bit of shade, but they'll also have plenty of sunlight during the middle of the day. And I got my helpers today. I got the ladies out here with me. She's the heavy lifter. She definitely does all the heavy lifting. Sarah, turn around and say hey to YouTube. Hey! <laughs> say turtle pond. Turtle pond! Turtle pond, she's excited. So next up, I'm taking a trip up to our local rock supplier, and you can see they supply all different types and sizes of rocks and stone, but today we're looking for that small river rock, and it's gonna be a mixture of around one to three inch river rocks, and that is the one right there. All right, I just made it back with all the river rocks. You can see I got five buckets. I think that'll do on this project. I'm rinsing them off. They cost somewhere around like seven to eight dollars a bucket, but they definitely add a lot to the pond feature. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse them all out and get all that dirt out so it's not down in the pond. All right, folks, in case you missed the last video, we created this little micro pond for Sarah. We used most of the stuff that we pulled out of our backyard pond. I'm not 100% sure if these lilies are going to make it or not. They turn a little bit yellow. But the goldfish likes to hang out back there. You can barely see him. He hides back there. I don't think he's quite gotten used to Sarah coming and looking at him and feeding him just yet. And in our last video, we asked y'all to help us name the goldfish. And Andrew Johnson says you should name the goldfish Einstein because he's got a big old brain. I completely agree with you, Andrew. So send me your address. We'll get you out a prize package. And our new pet goldfish is named Einstein. <laughs> All right, guys, you can see we just about got enough red clay dug out for the pond. I told Sarah that I'd give her a lollipop if she got in there and dug me a hole. 15 minutes later, she had all this done. No, nah, I'm just kidding. But she was a lot of help. But as you can see, this is what it looks like. I'm going to clean it up, get all those roots out of there, make sure we don't have anything poking into the liner. And then we're going to go in with a base layer of sand. So you definitely want to take your level and make sure that that bottom is completely level before you put the liner in. And then I'm also going to add about one to two inches of sand. I've got about an inch to two inches of sand in there and everything's leveled out perfect. So I definitely see the reason people don't use these hard liners more often is because getting everything set and level was pretty tough. 
But now that I've gotten everything perfectly level, I'm gonna go in and start backfilling the dirt that I dug out. And once I get done with that, we'll go around and start adding some rock around these edges. It's coming along nicely. You can see I'm using the dirt that I removed to come in and fill these edges back in. I'm gonna leave it just a little bit below the liner, the edge of the liner, because we're gonna come in and put those river rocks around the outside. Still got a little bit more to add here. All right, I finally got all the dirt and clay put around the pond. Everything's leveled back out. The next thing I'm going to do is empty it and clean all the dirt out of it that's falling down in here. If you do a lot with ponds, I'd highly recommend getting one of these sump pumps. It can fill them up and empty them really fast. It suctions out of the bottom right there. Got it nice and clean and shiny. Now we're going to go in with some river rocks down there on the bottom and on the shelf. All right, next up we're going to install a waterfall kit. And it works also as a filter because it has these bio balls that will go right on top of the pump here. And you got your filter pads and you, so it'll be pump on the bottom, bio balls, filter pads, and then a stem coming up with a waterfall coming out of the top of it. So I put the filter slash fountain right there in that corner. I may end up moving that around. We're definitely going to try to cover it up with some plants so it doesn't stick out so much. But we're going to test it right there first. I got a few different adapters. Once we fill the water up, we'll see what the fountain looks like. Now the best part of every pond build, filling it up with water. So as the pond fills up, I want to point something out. If any of you are considering doing a project like this, this pond is not going to have an overflow valve. So on our pond over there, right there at the skimmer, if the water level gets to a certain point, it'll go through an outlet pipe and go hit a drain. Well, this one's not going to have it, so if you get a lot of rain, it's just going to go over the edges. And since this is just temporary, I'm fine with that. If we were going to keep it here long term, I would probably add some sort of a cutout right there and then that led to a drain. So I just hooked the filter box up. Not the greatest fountain in the world. I did buy some other attachments that make the water spray a little bit different, but for now I'm just leaving it on. That way we can get that water filtered. So I just hauled away all that dirt that I put on those tarps. And you can see here now I'm starting to do the edging. And basically what you want to do is you just want to go down that pond liner and cover it up so you're not just seeing that black liner whenever you walk up. You want it to look a little bit more natural and right now everything just looks rocks because that's the first thing you go in with but when we add the wood pieces and all the plant life it should really come to life so i thought i'd be able to finish up this project in a day but unfortunately i'm losing daylight so in our next video you'll be seeing all the plants planted the wood pieces added to the pond as well as all the turtles but i have a couple of ideas about things i could put in this pond with the turtles and one of them is crawfish so a lot of people have suggested that we put crawfish in our big pond for the past couple of years but i could never do it because crawfish can burrow through a liner since this liner is made out of hard material i could actually put crawfish in here with the turtles so guys, leave me a comment down below if you'd like to see me add crawfish. Also want to say happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Sarah and I spent our Father's Day weekend with our family and we went out fishing. She actually caught a really big catfish, the biggest fish she's ever caught. Good job, keep going. He's going, he's almost in. Keep going, keep going. Alright, I'm gonna flip him up on the bank. He's a big one. Look at how big he is. and i couldn't be happier but you'll be seeing a lot more fishing videos of her with us here in the future now it's time to check in on our boy moby not a lot of introduction needed with him so we're just going to go ahead and roll into a feeding clip Sure. 
that's going to wrap this video up, folks. Make sure you're subscribed for part two of the pond build to see everything tie together and those turtles finally get to make it back to the outdoors. I hope you all enjoyed this video and we will see you all next time. Can tell you people they were the devil's children.